Welcome to the Sharing the Faith podcast, where every other week we explore the beauty and power of faith in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Now here is your host, Dr. Tom Neal. Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Tom Neal here on another episode of Sharing the Faith, and I am so happy you're with us today. And today, I'm so happy also to say I have a guest with me and not on Zoom to join us for conversation today, uh, who, a man who's become a dear friend of mine through the Lay Formation Institute here in his work, Scott Berry. Scott, it's so wonderful to have you here with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, great, great blessing. So Scott is here today to talk with me about what I'll call the spirituality of the 12 steps. Uh, and it's something Scott is in the Lay Formation Institute here at uh, the diocese. And Lay Formation Institute is a two-year formation program for lay people who want to deepen their own faith, deepen a sense of integration of their faith life and their spiritual lives for the sake of uh, growing their mission in the world and in the church and service. So Scott has been in this program for a, almost uh, coming up on a year, almost a year right now. So I've gotten to know Scott through the program. We meet together fairly consistently and um, we've been sharing book reading together, uh, books <laughs> in the spiritual life. And Scott has been unearthing so many insights <laughs> for me into the, into the church's uh, tradition, but also specifically into the spiritual life, that I said to him one day, Scott, can you share these insights uh, on a podcast with the people who watch this? And especially his insights into the 12 steps. Uh, and we'll kind of elaborate on that more. But Scott, to begin, maybe it'd be appropriate just to ask you to introduce yourself to the people viewing with us today. Yeah, I'm Scott Berry. And as an opener, uh, my name's Scott, and I'm an alcoholic in recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, Biography, uh, I was uh, born at a very young age. Is that, <laughs> is that too much detail? No, that's, a, that's way more than I expected. Oh, okay. Well, let me back it up a TMI, little bit. TMI, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. Went to college there. Uh, the draft for Vietnam was still on, so I became a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Uh, my first assignment was Minot, North Dakota. Mm. Oh. You don't know cold until you've been in Minot, North Dakota. Just North Dakota is enough to say, I don't want to go and there. And if you'd have told me one day that I would retire <laughs> at Eglin Air Force Base, I'd say you were a bold-faced liar. <laughs> but it happened. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, did that for 26 years mm. and uh, got into the financial planning business and then uh, retired from that. So I'm fully retired, although I'm active. Uh, as you mentioned, the Lay Formation Institute, Okaloosa, County Master Gardener, some other things. Oh, wow. uh, I've got a wife of 46 years and three children, of which one of us, one of them, we lost last August. Yes. So uh, that's that's me in a nutshell. Thank you, thank you so much for Scott and, and for sharing that about your life, your background, and relevant especially to our conversation today. It's uh, it's such a privilege. So we've talked about the 12 steps a number of times, and over the years, I've heard of them. I've read things about them. I've even referenced it in talks I've given. But if you ask me exactly what they were, I don't, I, I don't think I could give you much depth of specificity. So maybe you could introduce what are the 12 steps themselves and then maybe a little bit about where they came from. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, just a little bit of background. There are more than a couple 12-step programs. Mm, nice. uh, there is uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. There's Gamblers Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. But... The common denominator is they all came from AA, from that. Okay. AA was the first one, and, uh, and that's the template, mm -hmm. you know, for that. Uh, started back in uh, 1935 when uh, two men who had been exposed to the Oxford group, a uh, Christian group starting there about uh, early 1900s, and part of their philosophy was... Uh, to stop drinking, but not, not all. Mm -hmm. And so Bob and Bill finally got to a point, said, we need an organization committed to helping the alcoholic who still suffers. Mm -hmm. And they started that in 1935. The uh, primary publication of Alcoholics Anonymous is a book called Alcoholics Anonymous, mm -hmm. uh, but with people in the program, it is just called a big book. Okay, big book, yeah. BB as you yeah. reference yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense. 
So that's that's kind of the background there. Mm -hmm. And so so AA kind of is the parent program and then other ones spun off of that. Is that right? And that's exactly right. However, AA is very specific about not claiming to be the only game in town. Okay. Um, they, however you can get sober or clean or whatever you know, your addiction is, they're all for it. Mm -hmm. We will be talking today about 12-step programs and a lot about AA, only because that's where my experience is. Sure. But I, I don't want anybody to get to think that, that you know, AA is the only game in town. Yes, that makes okay? sense. That makes sense. So maybe let's, let's dig down now into the 12 steps themselves, if you could un, you know, kind of maybe go through them however you want to and then dig down a little bit deeper. Sure. Uh, we had talked about the spirituality uh, of the 12-step yes. program, programs. And, and I will tell you that if you remove spirituality from the 12 step programs, you don't have a program, oh. period. Oh. Seven of the 12 steps either uh, mention a higher power yes. or infer it in, in some way. Mm -hmm. and, and I also want to make sure I'm not talking religion, I'm talking spirituality. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll see that as I, as I go a little bit farther. Sure. Uh, the, the first step, uh, is an admission that we are powerless over alcohol and our lives have become unmanageable. Mm -hmm. Again, take out alcohol, put in drugs or whatever you want to. Sure. Uh, that's what is called hitting your bottom. And that is where you absolutely cannot realize you cannot do this on your own. And you've been beaten into a pulp, either mentally or physically. And you say, I give up. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the only step that you really need to accomplish 100%. Wow. Uh, but the second step, bam, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Mm. Now, notice I didn't say God. No, right. Um, AA is, is real specific that that uh, they refer to a higher power. And later in the, in the big book, they talk about God. But, but they're not preaching uh, uh, religion at all. Mm -hmm. and, and so as part of that step two, all you have to believe that out there, somewhere, there is a powder grin than yourself. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine was asked by his sponsor, he said, John, do you think there's a, a power greater than yourself in the universe? And John said, well, yeah. Yeah. And his sponsor said, well, that's a good start. <laughs> uh, You'd be done in the right place. That's right. That's you're, it. yeah, you're here. And, and so, and, and so they, they transition, um, through the steps. The next one is, uh, making a decision to turn the, our will and our lives over the care of God, you know, as we understand him, mm -hmm. recognizing that you know, these steps kind of evolve and you may go back and learn more about step two than you did when you first started. So it's, yes. it's not a uh, cut off uh, linear uh, progression. Um, the, the next step is really interesting because uh, it's, uh, it's about taking a moral inventory. Mm. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it does. It sounds like <laughs> the beginning of mass or an examination of conscience. It certainly does. It certainly does. Yes. Uh, and that was, that was one of the uh, pillars in the Oxford group. Mm. Uh, in fact, the, they call it the four C's in the Os Oxford group, which were confidence, confession, conviction, conversion, and continuance. Mm. And if you look at those, four of those, or all of those, you're going to see an awful lot of step four through 12. Oh, so that really, wow. that really was the genesis. Okay. AA did not happen in a vacuum. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you, you make a moral inventory. Mm. Uh, and that means going back all the, to day one. And, and I'm serious. Mm -hmm. You know, you were a bully at school. Mm. Okay. And, and you write that down. You write it out. And there's, there's columns that, for, for each part of that, that inventory, maybe the most important part is the last one, which is what is my part in this resentment? Oh, wow. Boy, that's tough because most people claim total innocence. Sure. Um, sure. And, and so what wow. that does, if done honestly, 
it really makes you realize that, you know, maybe they're not all the problem. Wow. Maybe you are. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, in each of these steps, you, you learn more about yourself. Yes. Uh, I would also uh, maintain that each of them are about surrender mm. in, in, in some way or another. Sure. And the biggest thing to surrender <laughs> is our ego, is pride. And the acronym in AA for ego is edging God out. Oh, I love that. Never heard that. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, and I got a lot more, but we don't have 45. We need no, more and more. All 40. the acronyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's rich, though. It, it is. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about about the, the those first steps, like acknowledging you're powerless? D does the program assume that you come in with that insight because you've hit a brick wall or you've reached rock bottom, or does the program begin also to help facilitate your knowledge that you are powerless, or is it both? And how does that work? There are there are no entry requirements. There's no entry. Requirements. They don't care where you're coming from. Got it. Uh, the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. Okay. So we have, we have people coming out from under a bridge and, and higher power. What's that? They, sure. Uh, so, so none of that is, is an entry requirement, but things that you will learn subsequent as you, as you work the steps. I got it. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, if, if you are a full-blown alcoholic and you had a drink just before you came in the program, your mind isn't going to be, you know, yeah. quite clear. Right. So you have to go to a couple meetings or talk to somebody before things kind of start to gel. I got it. That makes sense. Uh, so continue. So, yes. so we've, we've done a, uh, a moral inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think Ignatius would be happy with that. He would be happy. Very <laughs> exercise friendly. <laughs> uh, the next step is admitted to God, to ourselves, another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Mm. Now, notice I didn't mention the S word, sin. No. Sin's got a religious connotation. Sure. And, and so we talk about uh, errors, misgivings, you know, whatever, but we're clear not to try and tie anything to religion. Mm -hmm. Now, I said, God, yourself, and another human being. Boy, does that sound familiar? It does. <laughs> I confess to and, Almighty God. <laughs> and, yeah, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, by the way, neither Bill nor, nor Bob were Catholic. Uh, but, uh, but that's an important part of the program. So, in step four when you listed all these things that you were resentful of, you go over with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's an interchange. Ideally, it's your sponsor, somebody in AA, mm -hmm. so that they can kind of guide you. But really, the big book says just a another person, because getting that out is, is a lot of the battle. And, and so we laugh that, you know, if you can do your fifth, if you want to do your fifth step with the uh, checkout lady at Winn-Dixie, that's fine. Oh, love that. <laughs> I, I haven't ever heard of anybody who did that. <laughs> but it, but it's, it fits yeah. into the... And, yeah. and obviously, there are a lot of shortcomings that we have that we really don't want to tell somebody at all. Mm. Now... Again, the program just says admit to another human being. So some people will go to a priest or a minister uh, and, and go over those. And then for the other ones, uh, work with their sponsor. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and and that, um, that step five can, can take hours. Uh, but I can tell you that it is a liberating experience. Mm. Because as I think everybody finds out, identifying a problem and naming it is a large part of the battle to get over it. Yeah, sure it is. Uh, Being very specific as to what it is and then voicing that to someone else. Yeah, yeah. Un unvarnished. Yeah, uh, right. So, so 
you, know, that you have made yourself emotionally naked. Mm. And, and so after step one, where we admitted that we were powerless, we hit, you know, this is a natural uh, continuation of that. Yes. Uh, hopefully by that time, you have some perception of a, of a higher power. Mm. Uh, again, no, no name uh, attached to it. In fact, when uh, Bill Wilson came into the program and he was still an active drunk, a person was arguing with him and, and the person said, well, Bill, why don't you just believe in a power of your own understanding? And Bill went, oh, I'd never thought of that. A lot of people have resentment because they grew up with a religion that they didn't think was friendly to them. And, and so they confuse religion with God. So they resent God. Really what they do is they re resent religion, you know, about, about getting force fed and having their knuckles slapped and, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but, but you really got to make that, that, uh, sure. that transition. Uh, and it sounds like the the element of freedom is crucial here. That this you're bringing your freedom into this moment. You're you're freely doing this yourself. You're not being coerced into it. This is a moment where you're surrendering yourself for acknowledging, confessing freely. Is that correct? That is that is absolutely spot on. Yeah. Uh, and and liberating. I I love that word in AA because it it really says what I wanted to say. In the third step, there is a, what's called a third step prayer in the big book, again, that says, relieve me of the bondage of self. The bondage of self. Mm. Now, the visual is when I came, came into AA, I was shackled by myself. Yeah. And through AA, I'm able to take those shackles off and, uh, and be a free person. Some who have had brushes with the law will tell you that after coming in today, previously, when they had a problem, they broke out in handcuffs. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, not, not uh, hives or not a skin problem. They broke out in handcuffs. Uh, so, so from there, um, you've, you've got all these defects of character you've just told somebody about. And, and the next step, what do I do with them? Well, ask your higher power to remove them. Mm. Now, there's nothing about that higher power will or anything, but you just honestly ask um, your, your higher power uh, to, uh, to well, let me, let me back up. The next step is you're absolutely ready to have these shortcomings mm -hmm. removed. The next step, which is step seven, is ask them to remove the shortcomings. I see. And no, uh, you know, there's no guarantee what, what's going to happen on the other side. But again, it's a, a, an exercise in surrender. Yeah. In telling the ego, uh, you've got, you know, you're, you're secondary. And, and I like to, to talk about a, a movie that came out at the uh, end of, of World War II called With God as My Co-Pilot. And it was about this older man who flew the flying tigers and went in with a bunch of young pilots. So there's a lot of apprehension. But, but uh, what we say is, if God is your uh, co-pilot, switch seats. Mm. Oh. <laughs> because a lot of people treat God as the spare tire sure. that they have in their trunk. They don't think about him. They don't care about him. But the minute they get a flat tire, what's the first thing they do? They open up the trunk. Oh, oh, yeah. What's this? Mm. Mm. So the, the, the dealing with the higher power uh, issue is, is, is a very, uh, very real one. And surrendering control of your own life in the, okay. yes. so, in, in the sense of not allowing someone else to enter into your life and help you to move you along. Is that right? Or would that be, you'd say that? Well, what most people again in AA, which is my frame of reference, have what's called a sponsor, which is somebody that has got a little bit more, uh, experience in the program and they will walk you through the steps. Hmm. 
And, and that person is, is somebody you need to really hold on to because when the chips are down, that's who you need to first call or, or, or somebody else. Yes. But they will, um, they will be the, the, the pole that you lean to whenever you have a question. And obviously, as we're going through, we meet new challenges and we don't understand this 12 step stuff. That's what the sponsor's for. Mm. So uh, that's, that's beneficial. So in, in step four, remember, we, we wrote out all these things. Yes. Um, when, you, when you get to step eight, you're, uh, you're going to make a list of all those people you have harmed and willing, not doing, but willing mm-hmm. to make amends to them all. Boy, can you imagine the people since you were two years old that you have harmed or maybe uh, angered or some way? That's a long list. Uh, obviously, a lot of it is from the, the inventory you, you previously uh, did. Uh, but, but this is where it, it breaks outside of, of uh, the 12-step program. Mm. You're not just talking about your buddies in the 12-step program where you've harmed them. You're talking about everybody else. And typically, what is that first? It's family. Yeah. It's family. Yeah. Uh, mm. Those that we love the most are, unfortunately, those the most that we tend to hurt the most. Yes. So uh, you go through all these and that you're, you're willing to make amends to them all. Then the, the ninth step is where you do it. And uh, this is not about forgiveness. This is not about forgiveness. This is to ask an amend. How can I make the situation better? Because forgiveness, you're off the hook with forgiveness. I, I tell the story of if, uh, if I loan you $5,000 and then you come to me later and say, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm really sorry for stealing your $5,000 and not paying you back. Oh, please forgive me. Okay, but what about the $5,000? <laughs> I didn't say anything about returning it. Sure. So part of that making amends typically is, uh, I'm sorry, Tom, I have harmed you in, in such and such a way. How can I make things right? Mm. Uh, and sometimes yeah. that's a, a pretty tall order. It is. Uh, and, and that's where a sponsor uh, is, is crucial to, uh, to, to, to go through that. Also, <laughs> it's important to work with the sponsor before you start going out and telling all these people all these things that you've done that they probably don't want to hear. That's true, too. I mean, there, sure. are th- there are some things that you might want to tell a priest instead of your spouse. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a sponsor, <laughs> you don't know that discretion is not easy to and, come by. And guess what happens? Yeah, it, <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> it cause all kinds of problems. That's at home. right. That's yeah, right. Of course. That's right. Uh, oh, that's really insightful. Would you distinguish them between, in this case, forgiveness and what we call in our Catholic tradition reconciliation? You're trying to reconcile the relationship by bringing amendment yeah. and repairing damage. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't think in a I'd ever use the word reconcile because that, again, has a, has a religious true. overtone. That's true. But, but when we've talked about making a list and talking, mm-hmm. confessing it to another human being, boy, that sure sounds like confession to me. It does. Yeah. Now, so you, you made a list of the people uh, that you've heard. And, and I, I would, I, I, forgive me for going back to step four again. But it's not only the people that you've had resentments to, it's person, places, and things. Mm. I have a resentment against the IRS. Mm. Okay, and you go through the columns, and then you say, what was my part in having a resentment to the IRS? Well, I didn't pay them as much as I should. I pay, you know, so so it's, it's also person, places, and things. And then as you go to make amends with, with individuals, it again is, is person, uh, places and things. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you know, how are you going to find out, 
uh, where your seventh, seventh grade teacher is, you know, or, or, or whatever. Obviously, uh, if you do it honestly, there are going to be a lot of person, places, and things on that list that you can't contact. That's again where where you work with a sponsor. Many people uh, have parents that have died and have an awful lot of amends to make to them. Uh, and one suggestion that that sponsors make is write them a letter, and I want to see it. Wow. And and then go to their gravesite and read the letter. Uh, that is the sort of thing that would bring closure and accountability. It's, it's one thing to say, I, I harmed all these people and all that. It's another to hold yourself accountable. So that can, that can get a very tense, tense sort of thing. And, and, And sometimes when you, when you figure out who you're going to talk to, you, you, talk about first those that I can talk to right now. Then there are those that I might have to wait a while for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. And there are those that I just can't at all. And that's where the letter writing or or, or something else um, come in. So uh, so that that, that would be step nine. And in the big book it has uh, it has uh, uh, promises of the step nine, you know, mm-hmm. um, that, that I'll be free of regret and, uh, on and on and on and on. And, it, and it's beautiful, um, uh, because here you have been emotionally naked to somebody and you don't know what, what they're going to tell you mm-hmm. or do. And then you have these promises which lift you up and put you back on track. Wow. Um, it's, it, it's powerful. That's so powerful. It, it, it really is. Now, again, in making those amends, somebody may say, get out of my office and I never want to see you again. Sure. Okay. But you've done your part. Sure you have. You've made the offer. Yeah. Make amends. You have offered to make something right. Sure. So you never know how the reaction goes. And of course, that's the uncertainty. It's another, and it's another surrender. You can't yes, control it is. their reaction now. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's, wow. Yeah. I hate um, you mean. Okay, so, so back in that step four, we did this initial inventory, uh, but that was a snapshot. Mm-hmm. That was a point in time. Step 10 is uh, to take a personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admitted it. Mm. So that's that follow-up sure. to, to step four. And, and uh, you can do that big inventory anytime, several times. Many people do it every year or they, because you really scrub things that you wouldn't normally uh, think about. But that step 10 tries to, to uh, take care of the elephants. Mm. Uh, and when you were wrong you know, promptly admitted it. Sure. Uh, and again, it doesn't, wow. doesn't say, it doesn't say, and ask for forgiveness. It says, you know, admit that you were wrong. And, and I like to, I like to think about, uh, the, the series happy days, uh, with the Fonz for those of who are old enough <laughs> to remember that. I remember well. And of course <laughs> the Fonz was really cool and, you know, slick back hair and do everything. <laughs> There was one particular episode that I, I remember, still remember watching, where the, the Fonz had to say he was wrong. Mm. And Henry Winkler, he played it beautifully. He, in character, he says, okay, you're right. I'm... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he can't admit it. It's so painful the, for him to admit it. He's wrong. The Fonz, who is all-knowing and all that... <laughs> Can't admit that he was wrong. Wow. I, I always think about that. <laughs> That's so That's, um, I, I like that. Uh, so so we, we have a, a feedback loop 
for dealing with resentments and, and, and harming people and so forth. Uh, but now, how do we maintain this? Mm-hmm. And that's where step 11 comes in. Uh, we're sought through medita- meditation and prayer uh, and, and to, uh, to, to press on from there. Nice. Um, asking only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Wow. It sounds like a serenity prayer, by the way. It does. Yeah. It does. And, and uh, that, that, again, is, is, is powerful. It is. Uh, it, that step 11 also asks us to improve our conscious contact with God. Mm-hmm. So that's not a, uh, it's a dynamic step. Sure it is. And, and many of these steps, as you probably have figured out already, you're, you're practicing every day. Yeah, of course. It's clear. It's, it's not just it's a, a way of life. It's a way of living. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and we'll get to the, the way of life in the, in the next step, mm. Uh, mm. Which, which finishes the, uh, the 12 step. But yes. improving our conscious contact with God. And, and the step says, as we understand him. Mm. Mm. So, mm-hmm. so again, we ain't, we ain't preaching a denomination mm-hmm. or, or a religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one f- famous case where a lady, as her higher power, uh, picked a doorknob. Mm. Really? <laughs> a doorknob? <laughs> well, here's her answer. Because every morning when she got up to go to work, What's the last thing she touched as she walked out the door? Wow. A doorknob. She went about her day. When she comes home at night, what's the first thing she touches is her doorknob. Wow. Isn't that powerful? It's very powerful. The, profi- the symbolism is so deep for her. Yeah. That's very moving. Yeah. It, it, Surprisingly. It, it, yeah. Because when you tell somebody, my higher power is a doorknob, they're going to say, ooh, Some, man. Yeah, got, something's yeah. not right there. No, no, <laughs> no. You need to, to get some treatment to that. Uh, wow. Now, some people, when, when you say God, some people make the group, the AA group they attend, their higher power. So God stands for group of drunks. Mm. Or good orderly direction. Mm. Uh, AA has just got a million million acronyms mm-hmm. uh, and, and slogans. So uh, again, it, it's wide open. And, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you, Doctor Neil, I've seen how that has has made a difference in people when they realize that they're not they don't have to to worry about the God that they grew up with. They can have their own understanding. Mm. Okay, so now we're at the 12th step. And that is, the, the first part of it says, having had a spiritual experience as the result of these steps. Not a result, the result. Um, we uh, continue on with that. We, we spread the news. We help uh, the alcoholic that still suffers. And we practice in all our affairs. Mm. That is where you get out of the, just your, your, your AA buddies. Yes. And you apply it to your life in general. Wow. Uh, and it's, and, and also part of that step 12 is, is carrying the message to the alcoholic who still suffers, which, which I think I mentioned. Sure. Yeah. So in AA, they, they will tell you, you can't, uh, you can't give away what you don't first have. Sure. And you can't keep it unless you give it away. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, there's it's profound too. It, it is. It and, is. And there are, there are religions that, I mean, that's, that's a big part, mm-hmm. you know, that's, uh, helping others, you know, uh, mm-hmm. treat your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Well, that sure sounds like what's in step 12. Yes. Uh, and practicing these principles in, in all our affairs. Um, so, so those are the 12 steps. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I, I would add that there's a, uh, uh, there is an appendices uh, 
to uh, the big book, which is called the, the Spiritual Experience. It's about a, a page and a half long, and it further defines this spiritual experience. Now, mm-hmm. for, for Bill Wilson, mm-hmm. it was a burning bush experience. Kind of like St. Paul on the road to Damascus. Sure. You know, a, a bam. In a, in a moment, it was life-changing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, that doesn't happen to most of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it quotes uh, in, the, uh, uh, in that appendix, it, it quotes uh, Young uh, as saying most of us have what's called an evol- uh, educational experience. That means that day by day, Mm -hmm. it develops and develops and develops. And then one day you wake up in the morning and you say, I don't want to have a drink. What's happened? Wow. Or I have a God of my understanding. How long has that been true? But it had been building over time toward that moment. Unknowing to you. Unknowing to you. (laughs) Not realizing this is happening inside of you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, that's, and people, you will. That's the common experience you're saying for most people. Yes, and and you will see people uh, light up and say, "Boy, I just realized that this, 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 and this." Sure. So, so obviously, does that help them not drink or use drugs or whatever? But think of that impact on the other people in their lives. Mm. You know, road road rage. Mm. That's the big one that's always mentioned. Mm. Either decreases or eliminated. Wow. Patience, waiting in line. Uh, all those things that, that in a day, on a daily basis, we allow to, to anger us. Yes. Now, it's not a perfect world. Of course not. But, but it does give you a, um, a guideline to go by. It does. And, and I, I would also say that uh, again, AA is a template. There are no rules in AA because you just can't tell an alcoholic what to do. Mm. And, and that's a trap that people who are in families with alcoholics do, which is they try to tell them what to do to control Absolutely. what they're doing. Absolutely. Out of ignorance. Right. Out of, of trying course. to... trying Good to will, trying to help them. Yeah. But, but the way I explain it is um, if I if I tell you that uh, that putting your hand uh, on a hot flame is going to burn you, you'll say okay, okay. But if you happen to do it yourself, it means a lot more to you. Yeah. It'll stick a lot more than if just somebody said, "Don't do this." Of course. Or or or, or do this. Yes. So, uh, you know, it's it, it's powerful in terms of its uh, application in everyday lives. And and getting back to the the uh, spiritual experience, uh, I like just r- briefly read the Please. the end yeah. part of it. the The quote is from Herbert Spencer, who uh, uh, was an Englishman, philosopher, scientist, not an alcoholic. As, as we know him, or as we know it. And here's what he says. He says, there is a principle which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. Wow. <laughs> How many times... Have you said, this is bad, with I can't do it, uh, just because I know. And then you say, well, wait a minute, maybe it's, you know, contempt prior in the investigation wow. will... Uh, Short circuit any learning process. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that and that's what we talked about before. And that's the virtue of humility in our tradition, right? That willingness to be open to seeing things differently than we see them now. Yes. Uh, and so the world doesn't change. No. You change mm-hmm. and your perception of the world. Mm-hmm. Now, again, boy, does that sound, does that sound familiar? It does sound familiar. 
<laughs> so the things that used to anger you don't anymore or don't anger you as much. Mm. The things that used to please you now please you a lot more. Mm. It, it, can anybody disagree with that? Mm. Mm. And in fact, the, the big book has been reviewed by Christian groups, by uh, by Jewish, uh, various organizations, and they all give it the thumbs up. I mean, if you take the word alcohol out of those 12 steps, what you have, Dr. Neal, is a good way to live your life. There you go. With or without alcohol or yes. drugs or, or gambling or anything else. Yes. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's really powerful. It's very powerful. And I appreciate I appreciate the comprehensiveness and the examples and, and maybe just, uh, Scott, to end in the last yeah, about four minutes or so, um, maybe just a couple of tidbits of practical wisdom for people who find themselves in situations of addiction, whether in themselves or a loved one. And just what would you kind of say to them now? And, and thank you for asking that. Yeah. Uh, let me first talk about the victims. The family is usually the most uh, the most immediate one. Uh, at least within Alcoholics Anonymous, and I, uh, again, assume with, with other 12-step programs, they have a program that um, addresses the problems of the, of the non-alcoholic, and they have steps, just like uh, alcoholics do, except a little bit different, obviously, yes. but allows them to understand the disease, how to deal with it. Uh, and, and so that's a, that's a huge... Uh, relief to those that that will will practice it. Uh, now, in terms of of the the person who has the addiction themselves, uh, what do we always do when we say we need an answer to something? We Google it. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, now, I will tell you that AA.org is the national website for uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and and. I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying it's there. And at that website, you have almost all the AA literature. Plus, you can find an AA meeting in your own hometown. Mm. Date, time, location. It's all very accessible then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A absolutely. So, uh, you know, being, being in recovery and using the tools... That, that at least I've found through the 12 steps uh, has been a life changer. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and my wife would probably agree more with that than I'm just telling you now. <laughs> she would say, indeed, it has been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and my children as well. You know. <laughs> you know. Now, now, we laugh about that, but you can imagine the horror stories. Yeah that occur with an alcoholic in the family. Right. So uh, I think that's about my, my two cents worth. Well, I, I'm so grateful. I mean, if, if you've ever gotten to know Scott, I've gotten to know Scott a, a bit, not, not a tremendously long time, but, but Scott, one of the things I appreciate so much about you, besides your, just your wit and intelligence, uh, is your honesty, your willingness to, to be really raw about things, honest about things, and self-knowledge that comes from that. And it makes me, it makes me want to be a better person. It must, makes me want to be better. Like what you bring out of your own struggle and suffering has made me want to be a better person a better man, a better Christian. So uh, oh, I, good. I can see how the 12th step naturally is contagious, that, that you, what you've suffered and struggled with to, to come to that point in your life, the freedom, the, the, the liberation um, that happens through this uh, can really affect others around you, make, make the world around you better through that. So, yeah, so I'm so grateful for very, that. Very, very much so. And I, I just like to have a quick antidote. Uh, Please, no, do it. Absolutely. Uh, I joke that Henry Ford was an alcoholic. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Why? Because he built cars that had a huge windshield and an itty bitty rear view mirror. Okay. <laughs> and, and we all need a big windshield to look around in life and see what's coming. Sure. We need a rear view mirror to look at our past mm. and to to uh, see what's back there. And these, these are common 
these are concepts within the 12 step program. Uh, but how many people do you know that have gone through life by looking in their rear view mirror? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, wow. And it takes the wisdom that comes from this to realize you can't live like that. Th- yes, it does. Now, people, I'm sure, don't, don't visualize it like that. That's a marvelous image, though. Uh, and, that's, and it's an image of hope. To me, it's an image of how hope works, is that you can, hope is only something that opens the future out to you. And if you live constantly in the past, it closes that off. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Scott. It's been a privilege to do this with you. Thank um, you. Um, and thank you for joining us on another edition of Sharing the Faith. Dr. Tom Neal and Scott Barry together today. God bless you. And may anyone in your life uh, that needs the freedom that Christ brings, uh, the freedom that will make them whole, uh, may they receive that gift and may this show in any way uh, bless those you love and you as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in today to the Sharing the Faith podcast. If you would like to learn more about the podcast, visit ptdiocese.org slash sharing the faith. If you listen to the audio version through an app such as Apple Podcast, Spotify, or iHeartRadio, be sure to rate, review, and comment. If you watched on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe or leave a comment on the episode. Thank you for listening.